Thank you, Ersten, <clears throat> for bringing us on this, tra this journey towards the integrated uh, solutions. Uh, <clears throat> very, very interesting. Uh, without further ado, we will move on to next speaker, uh, Søren Karst Nielsen. And Søren, you will, uh, I think, uh, if understood correctly, you will look very much into uh, uh, water leakage uh, problems, right? Yes, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to uh, present our, our approach to reduce non-revenue water. You see my screen now? Yes, it's fine. Just go into slideshow mode. Yes. Yeah. So reduction of non-revenue water is a very important task for uh, the water companies. Loss of drinking water means loss of scarce resources, loss of money and vulnerability to hygienic problems. It, but dedicated work on reducing the volume of non renewable water can lead to less than 10% in the long term. To obtain this goal, a number of appropriate solutions must be implemented. But you can make, it is a fact that in Denmark, the average non revenue water is reduced to 7% last year in an average for the water companies. Yeah. Behind this uh, schedule, sorry. Behind this, behind this uh, presentation is. Uh, oh, I'm really sorry about this. I don't know how to stop it. This is very embarrassing. Sorry. Behind this presentation is uh, CEO of Livecock, Jan Wirtner Koch, business developer of Kruger, Sean Karsten Nielsen speaking and Chief Assistant of Livecock, Pai Chen. We have a solution uh, to reduce non-revenue water, which consists of uh, a six layer activity plan, online registration, district meter area, leakage detection, pressure management, accurate consumer meters and pump arrangements. Now for the first one, online registration, we will install a unit at the entrance to a, a, a supply area. And this unit will transmit data every five minutes on water pressure and water flow and every hour on water volume and energy consumption. The transmission goes through the mobile network and the data ends up in a database from where uh, a system, water manager system can interpret the data and make reports and make through algorithms, give warnings about leakages. You can also like shown here with the graph, you can go in and make graphs and study things in details. And you will be able to uh, look at water balances. I will come back to that. Now the second stage is district meter areas. A district meter area is a defined area within the, the water distribution network. It is closed either by valves or by permanently disconnected pipes. And water coming into the area is metered, as I showed you before. And on the basis of these measurements, it is possible to make a precise water loss analysis. The third stage is leakage detection. It requires trained and dedicated personnel and requires access to the right uh, technology and effective planning. And then when data gives indications on something is wrong in an area, you will start leakage detection activities. The fourth layer is pressure management. It will increase comfort, delivering a stable pressure in the critical points. You will save energy as pressure is lowered on an average. You will reduce leakages due to lower pressure and you minimize the risk of pipe bursts due to more stable pressure. The fifth activity is accurate consumer meters. 
they are, should be able to detect even low flows and can be an important in order to reduce commercial losses. Modern uh, inductive meters starts measuring already at two liters per hour, where mechanical meters starts at 20 liters per hour. It is worth to consider whether this is uh, uh, beneficial for your area. The last uh, part is pump arrangements, where smooth operation, less pressure fluctuations, and fewer start and stops, and very low energy consumption is a result of a, a, a good pump arrangement. Now I will look into the water balance for one uh, domestic zone. I have here on the, the, the graph here with the blue and red columns. The red columns are the water pumped into the system. You have a, an area with around 10,000 people. And the blue colors are the, the, the water that is accounted for. Now the difference between these, in this case is 150,000 cubic meters and it corresponds to 36%. This is the non-revenue water. This is the water not revenued for. Now I can go into the, to look at the, at the flow pumped into the, the area. This is based on the five minute values, this graph down here. And you will, you will see clearly that we have two big incidents with the leakages. The first one accounts for 66,000 cubic meters and the second one's for 23,000 cubic meters. In general, you have a, a leakage around five cubic meters per hour, <coughs> sorry. And this counts for 44,000 cubic meters. All in all, you have 73,000, which corresponds to 20%. So the physical losses, they are 20% in the area. And then you can calculate the commercial losses, which are 16%. So reducing non-revenue water has a good business case. For step one, one to five in the area we just talked about, the investment will be around 1 million CNI to reduce about 80,000 cubic meters per year. With a production cost around uh, three, two, two to three CNI, you will have uh, a reduced uh, cost of 200,000 CNI. So the return of investment will be five years. After two years, when training are finalized and investments in one area, it will be reduced. So you will can expect to decrease it to four years. Now the benefits will not only be economical, but it will also be a risk for contamination of the drinking water. When a leak makes contact between water and soil, you risk to contaminate the water. You will have lower environmental impact, long life time for the network, lower energy consumption, and leakage will uh, slow down the uh, leakage when, when you don't have enough water in the area, it will slow down the, the development of the city. There are some barriers. Low tariffs on water and energy is a barrier, uh, as I have uh, found it in, in China. And uh, the work for lower uh, non-revenue water requires organizational changes. You will involve many apartments in a department, sorry, many departments in an organization, uh, in, a, in a normal uh, water organization. And um, all consequences of water recovery are not included in the cost of water. You have an uh, ecological uh, consequence when you uh, draw too much water from the system, from the nature. And uh, then the last thing is that the work with technology for lower non-revenue water has not the same potent as change pipe projects. So we see a tendency that change of pipes is more popular than non-revenue water projects. So thank you very much for your attention. This is uh, what uh, 
my uh, speech. This will conclude my speech. Thank you very much, Søren, and thank you very much also for summarizing the the barriers and the the end of your interesting presentation. This is some uh, thing we will come back to at, at our roundtable in the end of the of the webinar. We will now have the uh, the pleasure to be able to invite Mr. Xiaochang Wang uh, from IWA to uh, to take the floor, and uh, I think the speakers, uh, the, the administrators, might will help you with uh, getting through your slides. So uh, please, Xiaochang Wang, um, let's have your presentation. I think you need to take your microphone down to your mouth on your headset. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, excellent, thank you. Oh, oh okay, yeah, thank you so much. I'm so sorry for the uh, trouble with my PC. So now I want to share the, my screen. Uh, does it work? Hello, does it work with my screen? Not yet. We can't see your screen. I, uh, 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 you can't see my screen. Okay, so I will um, see what's a problem. So here, um, because here I used, uh, okay. Is that okay now? No, I can I can uh, share your presentation as well. Oh, Would you okay, like that? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yes, please. So, can you uh, help me to share the screen uh, with our audience? Yeah. <clears throat> See you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, can I start? Okay. okay. Good morning and good afternoon. I'm Xiao Chang Wang. So at this moment, I, I am in London. It's very early in the morning. So in the next 12 minutes, so I will briefly introduce my idea on what wise cities, especially the IWA principle for what wise cities. Next slide. So with this slide, I just say a little bit about the global issues such as climate change, uh, urbanization, and the limited resources. So I got no time to say it in detail. Under such a condition, we have to consider the needs for a paradigm shift in terms of resource recovery, livability, and a sustainable system design, especially for water. So that's my idea about the old paradigm and the new uh, paradigm. Under such a condition, about 12 years ago, in International Water Association, we started the Cities of the Future program. So this is the outline of the program. So I'm fortunately joined this program from the very beginning. Next slide, please. So as an important output from the Cities of the Future program, we published the IWA principles for water-wise cities. So this picture shows us the whole as a structure of the a principle. So I will explain some detail and for next slides. You see, we say we proposed five building blocks to deliver sustainable urban water. It includes some new vision, good governance, 
updated knowledge and capacity. Of course, usable planning tools and implementation tools. Sorry, I got no time to explain in detail, but some of my ideas will be composed in the following slides. Along with the five blocks, we also propose five levels of actions. So we have to take for building water-wise cities. So we can see the water surface. It should be regenerative. We can see the new way of urban design to build our city to be water sensitive. So we have to consider the connection of our city with the basin. And more importantly, we have to consider the participation of all people to form what we say a water-wise communities. Next slide. So anyway, to achieve our common goal, we are facing various difficulties. Here, for example, here, I would like to mention water shortage, water pollution, urban flooding, and the imbalance between urban infrastructures yeah, with water. And more importantly, the unfavorable living conditions, including poor urban ecology. Next slide. So in my idea, so what's the main reason for these problems? I'd like to point out that's because up to now, we are using what we say the conventional methodology of urban water system design. So here, so I show you the characteristics and the adaptable condition. What I want to point out is the conventional system, the way we design it, no longer meet the requirements nowadays. Next slide. So with this slide, I want to show you my idea on the direction for change, or what I mentioned already, a paradigm shift. So we should move from the engineering dependent system to a new system. I think the characteristics is engineering in the nature. So I have to say, with the IWA principles of water-wise cities, we considered the solutions to solve these problems. Yeah, for example, we consider integration of urban systems and services and the provision of alternative resources. So that's the systematic solutions. We consider urban water and energy saving resource recovery and the provision of a sufficient water space. So that can be useful for water shortage and the flood control. In turn, next slide. So we can see the watershed management and the source of protection and the utilization of new materials. It can help water pollution control. We provide visible urban water, enable regenerative water surveys, and water-related resilient urban design. It can help us to find countermeasures to enhance livability. And the next slide. More importantly, as I mentioned already, for building water-wise cities, we need the participation of people of different levels, including our citizens, our professionals, our policy makers, and also our government or our leaders. Anyway, up to now, in different countries, there are already many su successful cases and experiences. For example, in North 
America. So they practice low impact development or LID. So here I just show you the characteristics, main measures under the main principles, but I got no time to explain in detail. Next slide. In Europe, including Netherlands, so they try to combine water-wise city construction with a sustainable urban drainage system. So that's the main technologies. The main character is to combine drainage system with green infrastructures. So I got no time to explain in detail, but with the slide, so I can show you the example of Amsterdam in the Netherlands, Copenhagen in Denmark, Gothenburg in Sweden, so under Lyon in France, and also in Australia. So they practiced water sensitive urban design or WSUD. So that's the uh, main measures. So with application of these measures, they did a very good practices in several um, large cities, such as Melbourne, Sydney, and Brisbane. So they face common problems and they set common goals, but in different cities, they do things a little bit different. And now we talked much about China. So you know, so from about seven years ago in China, the central government proposed Sponge City Initiative or Sponge City Construction. So the nationwide undertaking by the central government now practicing in different cities. So here I can mention some examples. They provided uh, these cases to IWA and on the IWA website, you can find these successful uh, cases. Yeah, for example, the Quanshan Cultural Plaza Wetlands, yeah, in Jiangsu province. So the Fu Tian River ecosystem in Shenzhen city, and also the water cycle management for the whole city in the place. I used to live there. Yeah, uh, and my university is also there, Xi'an, the ancient city of China. Oh, I mentioned in the beginning, so with a quite a limited time, it is impossible for me to explain in any detail about what I talked about the IWA principles of water-wise cities and the successful cases and the experiences in the whole world. Firstly, just two months ago, my book on water-wise cities and the sustainable water systems are published by IWA Publishing. Fortunately, they got a support so from knowledge and latched. So therefore, this book can be freely downloaded from the IWAP a website. With all this in mind, I would like to conclude my talk with several remarks. First of all, as I mentioned already, we I said we face climate change, population growth and urbanization, and the increasing demand for resource supply. All these are stimulating a paradigm shift in urban water system design, as what I mentioned. So you can find the uh, detail so in my um, a PPT a file. Secondly, I have to say, the IWA principles for water-wise cities are not 
divided by IWA experts, but is formulated on the basis of global experiences, such as what I mentioned, IOID in North America, SUDS in Europe, USUD in Australia, and a spawned city in China. And the last but not the least, I'd like to say face all these common and specific problems in various countries and the regions. I believe international exchanges are extremely important towards the future. So that's all for my uh, talk. So under the request of the organizer, I agreed to share the PDF format of my presentation to all our audience. So I hope what I talked today can give you the outline of the IWA principles for water wise uh, cities. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman. That's all for my talk. Thank you very much, Xiao Chang Wang. <clears throat> Uh, and I can say uh, as a follow-up that the link to the book is, uh, you can find it in the chat. Uh, the link will also be uh, available from CWP website. And <clears throat> also uh, together at our website, we will also have the a report from this webinar and from the uh, previous uh, webinar <clears throat> uh, as well. Um, you can find the PPTs and summary report from the previous webinar uh, at our website and also the PPTs and summary report from this webinar will be made uh, available uh, as well uh, shortly from here. We will come back to the uh, observations of uh, Xiao Chang Wang in the roundtable in the end. But before that, we still have got a couple of uh, presentations. And next in line is uh, Ken Yan from AVK. Please, Ken, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. OK. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. And uh, now I come from AVK China, and I'm based in our Shanghai office. And so the later I will use uh, Chinese language to make my presentation to everyone and hope it may be like uh, a, a cup of coffee to make everybody have some insight of the business of the water. And then let me share my screen first. Oh, Chisakondo 逐步深化到我们之前也提到过的非收益水的始于全球供应链的一个打造
包括污水、废水以及我们的供水等等领域呢，我们也吸纳了或收购了全球顶尖的阀门的企业，为客户提供打包式的阀门的服务。那么水行业作为 A B K 三大行业之一，我们另外两个行业是。工业和新兴制造水行业将会包括供水、污水、燃气和消防，当中供水、污水也是我们今天的主题之一。那么在中国呢，已经有九家公司以及销售公司以及工厂，那主要的生产基地也是亚太最大的，位于安徽省的马鞍山市，也欢迎有兴趣的同仁可以到我们的工厂进行参观。那么最终呢，我们也希望在水的整个循环当中。能够提供自己的一份贡献，因为我们了解到，就是说，呃，实实事求是来说，每一个水是一个民生问题，每一个人需要的是用到水，并且用到好的水。从业主角度，他希望把水管好，那么整个水的输送和管理过程中，阀门是起到一个至关的作用。那么我们切入到非收益水的这个点。其实，在“十三五”规划的时候，非收益水在中国的“十三五”规划当中已经要求，希望要降到 10% 的非收益水，从 15% 降到 10% 那么，在任何措施执行之前，我们会要求自己的产品先要提供一个高质量，才能保证整个的设施基础循环能够稳定的运行。这边是一个图表，是我们收集了一些自己在本土的一些项目。案例当然，它不能代表所有的一个象征性的意义，但是至少从我们所提供的产品而言，它可以给大家一个建议或者参考。我们比如说，我们有一台呃闸阀，它是在管道当中使用，更多的是在城市管网中用。在中国，我们买到一台阀门的时候，往往会提供一年到两年的质保期。那么两年过后，我们会看到。往往一些，嗯，其他的一些产品，它就会出现各种小毛小病或者跑冒滴漏的一些现象，就会产生在一些维护费用。而基本上能够连续使用五年以上的产品会比较少的。而 A V K 我们就打造专门的一个品质，坚持了几十年，我们能够提供一个十年的质保，可以使得如果我在十年之后，我们的运用将近是一台阀门，可以抵上进其他的六台。这个就是一个生命成本周期的一个分析。那么，同时为了保证良好的一个品质呢，我们会在水就阀门本身的从橡胶科技，因为它起到所有的密封件都是用我们独有的呃橡胶钴米所来制造的，包括 GSK 德国重防腐是为了达到饮用水的标准，包括面对各种恶劣的情况，使得客户在整个使用过程中会觉发现。我们的使用寿命会极其的长。那这边有一个简单的例子，这两张图片是我们拍摄于位于安徽合肥市的新三水厂，它其实是之前有一个老的三水厂，运营了十七年之后迁址的一个地方，但是在十七年前 ，A V K 就提供了它部分的阀门产品。连续使用17年没有出现任何问题，然后保证良好的运行。那么在新厂迁建的时候，我们就从原先只供可能 20% 到30的阀门，一直到覆盖到它总体阀门采购量的 90% 而这个厂的现在的处理量呢是40万吨每天。那么其实我们有一点会呃引起思考的就是，往往就是说一些高品质的东西，它需要一个时间的积累才能干到它的长效经济。那么，针对之前的非收益水，我们会讲到各个高品质，包括一些产品的叠加技术，会使得我们对于水资源的管理，包括特别是漏损这一块，非收益水提供帮助。那么这个模型呢，是我们比较通认的国际水协的我们的漏损模型。之前也有专家已经提到过，有四大方向可以对我们相关的。呃，整个的解决方案提供帮助 ，A V K 也在这四个方向落实到自己能做什么。从资产管理来言，现在我们的每一台阀门的出厂都是带有唯一的身份证，是一个二维码，通过手机的软件的扫码可以定位到我阀门安装的情况、照片的上传，这是为未来业主
，他为了提高自己的产品寿命，他会有各种的维护的这种巡检也好，包括定期的呃勘察也好，可以提供极大的一个基础的数据的支持。第二个就是快速抢修，就是任何报馆的时候，我们有相关的抢修的一些呃部件，以及我们的一些探路装置。我们有很多探路，包括呃超声的各方面，它可以跟我们的阀门的呃阀轴啊、延长杆进行连接。因为在很多中国的馆网当中，它都是埋地的，往往就是一些阀门呢，它是有阀门井，是可以跟一些探路装置进行结合的，便于我们进行一些漏损的啊、呃、探测。而压力管理。呃，有很大的不同，就是在中国，因为它的人口比较大，它所有的城市管线会随着城市的进步，它的会直径越来越大。我们常规可能有三百口径的呃管道，现在一米口径或者一米五口径的都是很常见的，所以应对老城市和新城区不同的管网口径和压力的管理，我们会提供减压阀或者调流阀这一类的控制性阀门去调节。片区的压力，那么降低我的爆管频率，同时延长你本身的管道使用寿命。这是我们一个海外的案例，它是总共是预计是使用五百台的减压阀，减压阀顾名思义就是降低管网或者片区当中的压力，但是它的压力末端是达到我们的服务要求的，就是每个人打开水龙头的时候，它是可以保证正常的使用的。那么最终在一期的时候装了二百三十五台以后呢，这是能耗以及爆管风险以及节约水量的数据，可以明显到这是一个更加验证我们实际的手段减压控制片区的一个实例。在中国其实已经逐步的开始使用了，但是不如海外会这样大片区的使用多。那么同时呢 ，AVK 我们也提供了这一个称之为。压力控制室，它往往是在于 d m p n 区的入流口设置的这样一个整合式的，包括各种仪表、减压阀在内的一个预制的，我们称之为中国可以称之为阀门井，来调节片区的压力。在我们的实际情况当中，我们会想它是不是会在 OK？ 实际我们会想是不是它会在城市的管网当中用的多，但是随着现在发现，它会在农村的水环境治理当中用的多，因为它的末端建设相对没有达到比较好的条件。那么这样一个具有保护的作用，同时集成各方面的控制作用的一个 chamber， 它可以为农村饮用水提供良好的片区调压，同时它的使用寿命也远大于一般的产品。这是它的一个内部的构成。包括我们海外呢，它就是根据丹麦的纳兰山斯市，我们也有相关的案例，可以从呃落差四十米的高处和低处，通过减压片区来提供服务。那么最后我们要想讲的就是一个长期效应，我们往往是看不到的。那么中国“十四五”包括远景当中提到了数字化，数字化是可以把所有的产品的信息状态进行一个平台的整合。那么其实可以从一定角度来说。本身我们可能只关心压力、流量，但是你产品本身的性能，它更多的都会进入到平台。你可以在最短的时间内去判断产品的好坏和未来的使用寿命以及长期效应，最终纳入一个整体的平台。所以我们也倡导了智能化，是帮助水务公司去解决问题，不是每样东西都是智能，而是要把做管理的方式变得更人性化、更简易。最后呢，我们也要承诺，就是所有的一个像非收益水呢，就是需要高品质的阀门。笨，呀，笨，包括我们要有做到水利模型，包括良好的计价方式，要各个供应商、各个政府部门的联调，才能实现这一目标。OK， 这就是我的一个整体报告，比较快。如果有问题的话，大家可以继续沟通。OK，I、okay, have finished. Thank you very much, Ken, for this presentation. We will move on on to the last、uh, speaker before the roundtable, Mr. Agostinho Avanzi from、uh, IWS. Please, Ag Agostinho. Yes. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. I'm Agostinho, civil hydraulic engineer based in Italy. Let me share the screen. 
OK. So I am going to introduce you um, about uh, uh, IWS, um, talking a bit about uh, uh, our experience in urban water efficiency. So IWS is an Italian business network uh, born, uh, established almost eight years ago. And uh, it's uh, composed by three uh, companies. Uh, the first one, BM Tecnologie Industriali, is an industrial company uh, providing uh, and supplying uh, instruments for uh, uh, network metering, uh, flow and pressures uh, um, measurement and level uh, and velocity measurements into the water supply and uh, wastewater network. Hydrostudy is the engineering consultancy company, so it is uh, the engineering company of the uh, of the business network, providing optimization of water supply and sewerage network. Last, uh, Chu F Water Venture is the uh, leak detection company that is the official uh, distributor of uh, utilis from uh, uh, Israel for uh, the leak detection from uh, satellite imagery. So uh, these three companies cover the entire uh, urban integrated water cycle starting from the uh, abstra water abstraction, going through the um, abduction and distribution uh, networks, uh, collection by means of sewerage and wastewater networks, and finally treatment. So concerning BM Technology Industriali is the first Italian recognized leader company in uh, uh, providing uh, water flows, level pressure and quality measuring, measuring uh, instruments, uh, in short, medium and long-term monitoring campaigns in sewerage and water networks, uh, in offering engineering solution for the reduction of uh, no revenue water, water losses, uh, extraneous, extraneous waters into the sewerage system, I mean uh, uh, inflow and uh, infiltration processes. Uh, the company has a deep knowledge of uh, customer processes because mainly uh, the, our uh, clients are uh, water utilities. Um, the company provides and develops uh, water and sewerage networks manage management culture. So uh, the company tried to bring and to share uh, the lesson learned in the past to the future uh, generation as well. And the company provides also a development of a worldwide distribution networks as well of their instrument and equipment. Basically, uh, the project is uh, capable, the, the company is capable to, um, to, uh, to deliver a turnkey project starting from the project management and development, installing, uh, maintaining and removing uh, the measurements, uh, sensor and equipment, and of course, analyzing the data collected. Some examples of our uh, products. Uh, so in this slide, I am going to share you only the information concerning the water supply network. So uh, the company can provide and can supply um, instruments for water losses management. In this case, uh, in this slide, uh, um, there is a description of our multifunctional data logger beyond for water cycle in long and short term monitoring campaign with the uh, ultrasonic transit mm, time flow module as well and pressure module as well. Uh, the company um, the company not only provides uh, uh, the equipment, but also uh, provides the full service for the installation and maintenance. Some other uh, instruments, so ultrasonic transit time flow meters, uh, cross correlation ultrasonic flow meters, uh, and electromagnetic flow meters uh, as well for no revenue water ma management and district meter areas design. 
uh, this is how our system uh, works. So uh, after the installation of the flow and pressure loggers and flow and pressure meters, they are automatically connected by means of GSM or GPRS to our, uh, to our um, computers and storage areas. And then by means of, uh, of uh, mobile application or um, desktop application, we can analyze and uh, um, monitor the networks in real time. As told you before, the company is the leader uh, in uh, Italian water market and our main uh, clients are water utilities, uh, starting from North Italy, so from uh, uh, Milan, going through the Central Italy, so uh, Rome, and then finally uh, closing uh, the cycle in, uh, in Sicily and the Sardinia uh, re uh, regions as well. Um, this is a case study realized uh, a few years ago concerning uh, a couple of uh, highly urbanized area in the northeast part of, uh, of Italy, uh, where we have uh, uh, the biggest industrial areas and commercial areas as well. So um, what we have done, um, we provided water losses management with uh, the design of district meter areas in order to reduce the no revenue water. What we used, we used the combination of uh, uh, hydraulic engineering, mathematical modeling, uh, we installed uh, high efficiency devices and of course we installed our application that is called WaterGuard that is a software uh, that can be installed in a mobile application or desktop application to monitor and to manage the network in real time concerning the water losses. Basically, um, the annual savings uh, estimation uh, was about 2000 megawatt per, uh, megawatt per hour in terms of energy saving, but also another benefit of the project was the reduction of, the, of 800, 800 tons of uh, uh, greenhouse gas emission. Concerning the engineering company of the group, uh, it's, uh, um, it's called HydroStudy and it's a small medium enterprise at European level. So uh, we are almost in uh, 50 engineers. Uh, the company is in line with the, uh, the quality management system, the environmental management system, and of course, last but not, le not least, the occupational health and safety management. Um, our uh, approach is the following. So a world in which water challenges are no longer a barrier to an inclusive, sustainable access to water, looking at the most cost beneficiary uh, action in water supply and wastewater systems. We believe that providing services uh, that help to improve the water infrastructure efficiency and resiliency by reducing water leakage and increasing the reuse of treated wastewater. We are in line with uh, the global, all our projects are in line with the, uh, the global agenda of the United Nations. We, our uh, systems and our uh, products are, and studies are in line with the, the uh, International Water Association uh, guidelines, so the EWA guidelines, and uh, the World Bank guideline as well concerning the no revenue water management. Our office is based- Last remarks, San Costeño. Excuse me? Uh, the last remarks, time is up. Yep. So uh, let's, move to, uh, to, uh, let's move to our system, apply to um, a real case. So our system is called WaterGuard and uh, uh, has been applied to um, the rehabilitation of uh, Malatia uh, water supply network in Turkey. We are talking about uh, half million, uh, half a million uh, population. We provided a master plan for a short, medium and long term uh, reduction of, of the no revenue water by means of uh, uh, hydraulic modeling and by means of installation of uh, uh, flow and pressure meters within the network. So we analyzed almost 3000 kilometers of network and uh, we have been capable to uh, pinpoint uh, almost 200 uh, leakage with a saving of 110 liters per second per day. 
Last, uh, last service that we can provide is based on the satellite imagery. Um, Dr. Stenio, you have to end now. Yes, so uh, let me just say that uh, um, by means of satellite imagery, uh, we can cover uh, all the, uh, if all the, uh, by satellite imagery, we can cover the information of uh, um, a water supply, um, water supply networks by means of pre-localized uh, the supposed lo lo water losses. Then we move on the ground for uh, um, localize directly the, um, the losses and then repair the losses by means of our uh, um, engineers. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Jan Costenio. Uh, difficult task to cover so many companies, but an interesting case with your uh, cooperation. Uh, and now we have had a lot of very interesting uh, cases. I would like to invite the, um, the speakers to, to join me for the, for the round table. And while we get you up with your screens uh, ready, I can say that uh, again, all the PPTs and a summary report from the uh, webinar will be available uh, at the CWP website. Also, Xiaojiang Wang's uh, book will be available there. Uh, I would like to draw the attention to the to the chat. There has been questions posed to uh, Professor Wang and to IWL. Uh, so please um, uh, have a look at the questions and and ask, answer those there. Uh, and a uh, final remark is, it is of course also always sad when you hear so many interesting presentations that it's not easy due to the webinar format to ask questions or to approach the speakers in the next coming break. Uh, we will hope that at least some of you will be able to attend when <coughs> uh, we organize physical site events at Aquatech Shanghai. And we also hope that a lot of you will be able to attend when we have the IWA World Congress in Copenhagen in uh, September next year. So, <coughs> moving on to the uh, to the roundtable, I would like to ask uh, the first question. I would like to pose will be to Yan Xiao Xu and uh, Xiao Chang Wang. Um, <coughs> we already during the presentations hear uh, about several challenges: increasing water demands, increasing population, and so on but also climate change. Are we actually preparing sufficiently for the impact of climate change? Uh, or will we be taken by surprise in 10 years from now, uh, how, uh, how much the impact will actually be? Should we spend more time on the scenarios uh, and look ahead and start preparing already now? And please uh, give short answers. Xiaoqiang Wang, will you start? Okay. <clears throat> so as I talked, so I think we are not prepared at all. Yeah. So globally, for many countries, we face problems. We discussion, we discuss problems, but we are not well uh, prepared. Even some country including my country of China. So they say they are taking so many measures, but I don't think they are well uh, prepared. So this is my uh, short answer to your question. So I saw on the screen, <clears throat> somebody mentioned the slide I used may not be updated. Yeah, because just now when I talk, I just looked at my arm a screen. I didn't see so the shared screen. So if that's not correct, I've already sent my file in PDF format to the organizer again. So if you want, you can contact with the organizer for the, for, for the file. So I saw here, uh, also, one question from Dr. Zhu Liang Liao. 
Yeah, so Professor may I answer Wang, now or Professor later? Professor Wang, yeah. Professor Wang, I will ask you to uh, the the question in the chat that you answer in the chat. Oh, and okay, then we okay, go okay. On to to hear Yuan Shao Shu. Are we sufficiently yeah. prepared for climate change? <clears throat> uh, uh, sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think that uh, we are, but not sufficiently. Uh, different countries, they have their uh, plans toward climate change, mm. uh, as well as, as China, but uh, mm, we still need some time to, like, first to measure uh, and the risk and then uh, think about the measures. Uh, so uh, currently, I think, uh, people's awareness about climate change has been raised and uh, the situation is getting better, but but currently we're still not sufficiently prepared, but we are going towards that. Okay. Um, on to uh, uh, Louis uh, Feisca um, and Agostinho Avanzi. Do you think... Um, do you think that the solutions we have, are the solutions uh, good enough or should we also look into even further uh, innovation uh, in order to address all the challenges? Louis first. Well, uh, unfortunately, I think we will never be prepared because uh, climate changes has been, have been uh, more uh, stressful for um, uh, Adric uh, resources and uh, the the pace that they are occurring are to uh, are, we are not we have not anticipated so uh, a further research is extremely necessary and urgent. Okay, Agostinho, the solutions are they sufficient? Not at all. Uh, we are we have been struggling and we are struggling in uh, in uh, projecting uh, the results of climate change in 20 30 50 100 years uh, we are realizing of course that the temperature will increase uh, water demand will increase uh, but we will not have enough water to address uh, all the needs so in my view uh, in my view uh, we are quite far to a confident solution for uh, concerning the climate change uh, uh, resiliency but I believe that we don't have uh, um, to wait our government we have to do something by our own I mean we have to change the mentality of the people and the population instead of waiting the government direction government will uh, the governments uh, will do their best Okay, because it's a, a balance between business, uh, of course, and uh, natural resources. But people and inhabitants uh, can create their better environment based on sharing the lesson learned in the past and increase uh, um, the and uh, uh, yes, increase a proper development in our brain concerning the climate change. Thank you, Ersten Egan Green. You mentioned your. Um your test facility for um, for integrating wastewater treatment with energy and resource recovery. Uh, and that means a lot of cross-sector <clears throat> efforts. Will we have the, uh, will, will the, um, the, the technical staffs of utilities, uh, will they have sufficient competences to cover this integrated approach? You are you are based in Sweden, an advanced market. Do you actually see that all of the utilities are already in terms of competences to deal with the these integrated solutions? Uh, thank you for this question. I think uh, answer is uh, no, because um, this area. Uh, at least in Sweden, we have problem to attract uh, people with um, good education. And also we must change the agenda as it is now. If you are running a sewage wastewater treatment plant, you are asked to reach a specific quality of the outlet water, but you are not asked 
to produce energy from the biogas, you are not asked to treat the water to a quality that it can be used for someone else. So I mean, we must change mindset in that way that we should establish geographical areas, water basins, where you say, how can we get enough water for cooling, for industry, for farmer, for citizen? What is needed? So we need better harvesting system, but we also need a new way of handling the water to, to establish better online understanding. We need digital sensors out there. So I think knowledge is one thing, but uh, the, the, the problem to be solved must be arranged differently because we, we are talking about water shortage in areas, but we are planning for a sewage waste for the treatment plant, for an industry, for the farmer and so on. And to be able to find a solution for everyone, we must set up the goal for the areas. And we are far away from that. It's a long tradition of organized differently. Uh, so I think that is the main, main purpose. And then the skills uh, in the companies, I will say you need new skills for, for water reuse. So th that is necessary, but you also <clears throat> have to rethink from the organization point of view. I think that is the, the most important thing. And then as said before, nature can be more involved for the water harvesting and for taking care of some of the wastewater and also to have enough of the water. But at the same time, I'm also a bit optimistic because being set under pressure, people find way to, to solve problems. So it's possible in my mind, but we must rethink a lot and we must also integrate much, much more than we are doing today. Thank you, Ersten. <clears throat> Um, going to the concrete case of uh, non-revenue water, I would like to ask uh, Ken Yan and Søren Karsten Nielsen. Uh, you have presented some quite convincing cases that water leakage reduction is technically feasible and even a good economic case. On the other hand, I do sense at the same time uh, that there might be limits to if the market is actually requesting these solutions, despite we have areas with water scarcity, the request at the market for uh, leakage reduction, and maybe also barriers in terms of economic uh, 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 conditions are not favorable for non-revenue water. As Søren said, and also asked by Fenyuan, it's more uh, relevant to, inv to invest in pipes instead of non-leakage. So what is the problem with the market? Why don't it request these solutions which would give much more water very, very quickly? Ken first. Uh, 城市新城区和老城区如果在中国的话我们知道如果降低一个非收益水你把基本的管网老的都替换掉它是没有问题的但是到现在阶段已经不会有大批量的去替换这个管网因为它是随着城市建设的它会涉及到许多其他的方方面
Why don't we see the markets uh, requesting NRW projects more? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't know and I don't understand it because uh, investments in NRW projects is uh, very uh, mm -hmm. useful for the, for the water utilities. Uh, I, I think we have a lot of uh, tradition, history. We have strong de departments in the, in, the, in the water companies that are doing this uh, change of pipes. And uh, the two things should not be uh, one or the other. It is possible to start the NRW journey at very small investments, and it requires a lot of organizational changes. It will take time. So I can only recommend that, that you start, start in the small, and then uh, it, it will increase uh, gradually. But um, maybe we need more, uh, or not maybe, it's for sure. More information and, and, and about it is uh, required. Thank you, Sun. <clears throat> Coming back to Xiao Chang Wang and uh, Yuan Xiao Shu, uh, we have discussed the need for paradigm shifts, and we have discussed the um, the the situation here when looking across technical solutions, economic framework, and so on. It's quite a a, a change, probably required. <laughs> What would be the organizational changes which would be uh, necessary to drive the paradigm shift? Xiao Chang Wang first. Okay. <clears throat> so nowadays we talk about the paradigm shift, but in my opinion, it's really very difficult. So, you know, up to now, including in the IWA Cities of the Future program. So we discussed the technical measures, but I agree with you. What more important is the organization or management of the paradigm shift? Yeah, for example, in China, so we have the movement of a small city a construction, but how to do it? So we just follow some successful examples. How can we consider the economic factor and also the cost benefit analysis? Up to now, we accumulated no experiences. In terms of these, I believe from now on, each country, each international organization. So we should bring people together, not only the water professional, but also the manager, so the decision maker, policy maker. So we have talk in a larger scale, so not the very narrow field. So that's my idea. So that's also my purpose to talk in this, uh, uh, this meeting about the IWA, uh, World Wide City uh, Principles. Yeah. Thank you. Yun Chao Shu. <clears throat> you need to put on your mic. Okay, uh, please correct me if I understood it wrongly. Uh, the thing is that, are you asking uh, the organizational uh, change to the paradigm change? Yes, so and also based that you're, you're making a lot of very comprehensive analysis and comprehensive analysis to be taken up needs organizations which corresponds to the degree of comprehensiveness. Okay. Uh, well, currently, uh, it's very difficult, but, uh, for example, for, for different countries, I, I, I believe they have, uh, they've made, uh, certain efforts to do that. Like, for example, for China and, uh, uh, two, uh, I think in 2017, and they've conducted their ministry reform. Uh, so previously for water issues, there are plenty of departments, uh, 
which is in charge of water problems. And after the ministry reform, there are only three uh, ministries and three departments uh, that, that deals with water issues, for example, ecological and uh, environment ministry and the water resource ministry. Uh, and and the and NDRC department, but lo local NDRC. So the government is trying to is trying to have a comprehensive holistic solution on water issues, but uh, it is very difficult in practical. Uh, for some of the problems, they have to uh, gain efforts uh, from different from the help of of different provinces. Uh, but currently. I would say that in China, and uh, mm, they're, they're, they're trying to think about a, a comprehensive solution, but still it's on the way. And, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, there's a long way to go. And uh, for, for some of the uh, problems, for example, it's not only by city, by administra administration boundaries, but they also have a basin boundaries. And China has both uh, administrations uh, on both level, both on like city level or provincial level and on basin level. So sometimes they would just fight uh, against each other. But now the river uh, chief system uh, kind of solve, solved some of the problems. Like uh, they have a river chief in charge of each river or each lake. So the river chief is in charge of coordinating all the issues regarding this river like the water quality and the water flow and the water use, blah, 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 blah. So the river chief is the, is the, is the person in charge. And uh, if, uh, for example, they need different two, two provinces need to work together or two, depart two departments need, uh, need to work together, the river chief will coordinate all the stuff. And the, the, the river chief is very powerful. It's usually the number one or number two person in that province. So this is a... a a good solution in my opinion and but but still it's uh only i think three and four years and uh we will see like in probably next five years how it goes for 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 the whole water situation in china thank you very much yun chao shu uh, time is slipping up i would like to ask uh, each of uh, our uh, seven panelists to come up uh, with uh, one single very brief recommendation which we can eventually further it can be a recommendation about uh, standards for the design of uh, tenders it can be recommendations for uh, getting uh, water and energy pricing right it can be uh, uh, regulatory changes you're free to choose but please come up with one recommendation top of mind which can uh, address the, the topics we have discussed uh, today. Ersten, will you please start and brief? Yes, short. I think the main uh, problem in my mind is to connect the silos. And the most important is to connect the water supply with the water treatment, not seeing them separately, but connect them. And then all the other areas must be connected. That is my best advice. Integrated water cycle management, can we call it? Yes. Luis your recommendation. Well, I have to agree with the <laughs> with the recommendation from Hosen. Uh, we reuse, and uh, we must all individually incorporate our need to um, conserve and to reuse and reduce the the water usage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Agostinho, your recommendation. I would add uh, not only integrated as much as possible uh, the systems, but uh, I would also add uh, integration among decision makers. Thank you. Ken Yan, your take? Uh, 行业标准的制定，因为它现在不仅仅只限于呃国家的企业，其实呃各行各业的企业都可以参与。这样的话，你可以了解政策的导入，它其实至关重要的。OK，local okay. standard setting，thank you，Sean，what's your suggestion？
Yes, uh, <clears throat> I would recommend that uh, the central uh, part of uh, China, where they they come up with very good uh, titles about a reduction of <clears throat> non-revenue water, they would uh, follow it up with uh, with action plans, asking for action plans from uh, from the from the citizens, and uh, showing that they will. Uh, be able to meet the goals set by the central government and that these goals, uh, these action plans should include a, a proper calculation of the economics in, in, the, in, the, in the projects for piping and the projects for uh, non-revenue water as, uh, as for instance we showed here in this presentation. So it will be more focus on uh, other possibilities than making new pipes in the areas. Thank you. Xiaocheng Wang, you'll get the last word of the round table. Your key recommendation, brief. So my key recommendation is still what I talked many times. We have to remember one water. So that means for water that can be useful, no matter where it comes from, if it can be useful, so we have to use it. And before that, we have to consider how to use it. So I believe that's still the first problem we should solve. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. Thank you to the <clears throat> panelists uh, and to all of you and to the uh, listeners. Uh, we will uh, draft a summary report we will circulate it among the panelists and you're very welcome to extend uh, your your uh, your remarks here example given the one which came up from kenyan about local standard setting a topic we have not touched so much upon which which is quite very important to decide what the tenders at the local markets uh, looks like uh, so please make use of this opportunity uh, to everybody out there. Make use of the uh, materials available at our website. Before we uh, close, I will invite uh, Editor Hogenberg from Aquatech Shanghai to very briefly say a few words about this upcoming expo. And after that, I will invite Liam Jia from the USME Center to very briefly say a few words about the uh, services of the SME Center. Both of these things are also, uh, uh, you can find in, uh, information in the flyer which have been circulated and which can also be found at our website. So once again, thanks to the panelists. Editor, a few words, a few minutes about the Aquatech Shanghai Expo. Yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon from Amsterdam. My video is not working. Uh, can the host Alight, can you maybe start my video? Yeah, thank you. Well, hello from Amsterdam. Um, well, we are really pleased that we uh, are able to support this interesting uh, webinars of the CEWP. Thank you to all speakers as well, uh, because uh, the mission of uh, Aquatech is providing a valuable global platform for international water-related organizations and to contribute to, uh, yeah, to solve the global challenges. So, um, so this is uh, definitely one of the, well, the activities that, that we want to be involved in. Um, but I would like to invite you all to continue this interesting conversation at Aquatech China. Uh, that will take place from the 2nd till the 4th of June. So if you are uh, living in China, then uh, we are looking forward to welcome you. We uh, will also host together with the CEWP a seminar so um, uh, to continue this uh, discussion. And we also have an interesting uh, industrial water leaders forum that will uh, um, that will uh, share knowledge about uh, the water carbon nex uh, nexus for a sustainable future. Um, and of course, uh, we hope to welcome you in person, uh, the Europeans especially, at Aquatech Amsterdam. And uh, in the meanwhile, you can follow our uh, online uh, newsletters uh, via Aquatech Trade. Thank you all and hope to see you uh, next webinar again. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Liam, please. Um, good morning, uh, everyone. I'm going to quickly share my uh, screen. Actually, good afternoon from Beijing. I'm going to quickly introduce uh, about uh, the EU SME uh, Center uh, and how uh, we partner with uh, China Europe for the platform and eventually how we serve um, the businesses for exporting activities uh, to China. We are uh, an EU funded program um, managed by uh, DG Grow and Yasme. Uh, we have been in China for more than 10 years. Now currently we're in the third phase of uh, the project. Uh, we are implemented by five chambers of commerce, where you can see from uh, the bottom. And we are very happy today to have Agostino uh, representing the Italian chamber participating to this session of uh, uh, the webinars. Uh, what we do is to provide services uh, to increase the knowledge of uh, SMEs um, on their awareness uh, to China and to eventually support in their trade and investment activities with China. Um, all our services we provide a free of charge for all European SMEs. Uh, that includes a comprehensive range of market reports. Uh, we also provide first line advice uh, for free and a couple of trainings, both online and offline. Eventually, we also have an advocacy platform where we constantly voice uh, to the Chinese uh, government authorities on improving the business environment for European companies in China. Uh, some examples of uh, the publications uh, we had uh, on the environment sector, and we try as, uh, to cover as many as possible uh, sectors concerning uh, export activities from Europe to China. And these are uh, some examples of the efforts we have uh, in the water sector and related sectors, including the publication, the reports we produced for China Europe Water Platform, last year on uh, industrial wastewater policy review and opportunities for uh, two of the regions in China, in Sichuan and in Shandong province. And these information are all available uh, on our website. Some examples, uh, again, of how we provide our services for businesses um, and how we are uh, offering complementary services uh, from CWP. I noticed that we have an excellent lineup of uh, speakers that includes research institutes, uh, think tanks, but also specifically for businesses uh, who are eyeing on the Chinese markets, uh, you are more than welcome to uh, reach out uh, to us uh, at the USME Center. And eventually, um, there are two more webinar series we are organizing in collaboration with uh, China Europe with a platform and RAI Amsterdam. Um, and eventually, uh, there will also be um, physical uh, side events and participation to Aquatech. Uh, Aquatech Shanghai of uh, the SME Center, uh, where uh, we will represent the businesses and more details are going to be announced uh, very soon on both platforms of uh, SME Center and on the China Europe Water Platform um, communication channels. And uh, that's very briefly about the SME uh, Center. Thank you very much, Liam. We are getting into the very final minutes. I will just uh, invite you to take part in the next webinar, which will be on April 29th. And on that one, we will be talking about smart water management, uh, digitalization considered by many, in particular myself, as the uh, best possibility actually to deal with all the water challenges we are we are facing so uh, please have uh, hope you have enjoyed the webinar today uh, hope to see you again on april 29th and um, have a, a nice uh, day and thank you for your attention bye bye <laughs>